What's going on? I want to thank the Love and Excellence fam for watching. So it's your girl Tina and I am back with another video for you all today. So as you can tell by the title, it is another read with me. And today is also a pre-recorded video. Let me get my phone so I can show. Um, yeah, so today's video is recorded on Friday, December the 20th. Um, we are still offline right now. We're having a little financial setback, but that's all right. Um, I still got a camera that we can record on, so we're going to still keep making videos so that when we come back online, we can go ahead and continue uploading content for you all. All right, so I want you to go ahead and grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your water, get comfortable on your couch, and let's get this knowledge together. All right, so um, we are at the last chapter of the seven spiritual laws of success, chapter seven, and it is the law of Dharma, or I'm sorry, let me go back. Yep, chapter 7 is the law of Dharma or purpose in life. Okay, so this is where I'm starting. Alright, so as you can see, the last chapter. So let's get into it, alright? Everyone has a purpose in life, a unique gift or a special talent to give to others. And when we blend this unique talent with service to others, we experience the ecstasy an exaltation of our own spirit, which is the ultimate goal of all goals. And then there's a quote at the top, as usual, and it says, When you work, you are a flute through whose heart the whispering of the hours turns to music. And what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. The seventh spiritual law of success is the law of Dharma. Dharma is a Sanskrit word that means purpose in life. The law of Dharma says that we have taken manifestation in physical form to fulfill a purpose. The field of pure potentiality is divinity in its essence, and the divine takes human form to fulfill a purpose. According to this law, you have a unique talent and a unique way of expressing it. There is something that you can do better than anyone else in the whole world. And for every unique talent and unique expression of that talent, there are also unique needs. When these needs are matched with the creative expression of your talent, that is the spark that creates affluence. Expressing your talents to fulfill needs creates unlimited wealth and abundance. If you could start children right from the beginning with this thought, you see the effect it has on their lives. In fact, I did this with my own children. Again and again, I told them there was a reason why they were here, and they had to find out what, re what that reason was for themselves. From the age of four years, they heard this. I also taught them to meditate when they were about the same age. And I told them, I never ever want you to worry about making a living. If you're unable to make a living when you grow up, I'll provide for you so you don't worry about that. I don't want you to focus on doing well in school. I don't want you to focus on getting the best grades or going to the best colleges. What I really want you to focus on is asking yourself how you can serve humanity and asking yourself what your unique talents are. Because you have a unique talent that no one else has and you have a special way of expressing that talent and no one else has it. They ended up going to the best schools, getting the best grades, and even in college, they are unique in that they are financially self-sufficient because they are focused on what they are here to give. This then is the law of Dharma. There are three components to the law of Dharma. The first component says that each of us is here to discover our true self, to find out on our own that our true self is spiritual, that essentially we are spiritual beings that have taken manifestation in physical form. 
We're not human beings that have occasional spiritual experiences. It's the other way around. We're spiritual beings that have occasional human experiences. Each of us is here to discover our higher self or our spiritual self. That's the first fulfillment of the law of Dharma. We must find out for ourselves that inside us is a God or goddess, an embryo that wants to be born so that we can express our divinity. The second component of the law of Dharma is to express our unique talents. The law of Dharma says that every human being has a unique talent. You have a talent that is unique in its expression, so unique that there's no one else alive on this planet that has that talent or that expression of that talent. This means that there's this means that there is one thing you can do and one way of doing it that is better than anyone else on this entire planet. When you're doing that one thing, you lose track of time. When you're expressing that one unique talent that you possess, or more than one unique talent in many cases, the expression of that talent takes you into timeless awareness. The third component of the law of Dharma is service to humanity. To serve your fellow human beings and to ask yourself the questions, how can I help? How can I help all those that I come in contact with? When you combine the ability to express your unique talent with service to humanity, then you make full use of the law of Dharma. And coupled with the experience of your own spirituality, the field of pure potentiality, there is no way you will not have access to unlimited abundance because that is the real way abundance is achieved. This is not a temporary abundance. It's permanent because of your unique talent, your way of expressing it, and your service and dedication to your fellow human beings, which you discover through asking the question, how can I help instead of what's in it for me? The question, what's in it for me, is the internal dialogue of the ego. Asking how can I help is the eternal, I'm sorry, the internal dialogue of the spirit. The spirit is that domain of your awareness where you experience your universality. In just shifting your internal dialogue from what's in it for me to how can I help, you automatically go beyond the ego into the domain of your spirit. While meditation is the most useful way of entering the domain of spirit, simply shifting your internal dialogue to how can I help will also access the spirit, that domain of your awareness where you experience your universality. If you want to make maximum use of the law of Dharma, then you have to make several commitments. The first commitment is, I am going to seek my higher self, which is beyond my ego, through spiritual practice. The second commitment is, I am going to discover my unique talents, and finding my unique talents, I am going to enjoy myself, because the process of enjoyment occurs when I go into timeless awareness. That's when I am in a state of bliss. The third commitment is, I'm going to ask myself how I am best suited to serve humanity. I'm going to answer that question and put it into practice. I'm going to use my unique talents to serve the needs of my fellow human beings. I will match those needs to my desire to help and serve others. Sit down and make a list of the answers to these two questions. Ask yourself, if money was no concern and you had all the time and money in the world, what would you do? If you would still do what you currently do, then you are in Dharma because you have passion for what you do. You are expressing your unique talents. Then ask yourself, how am I best suited to serve humanity? Answer that question and put it into practice. Discover your divinity, finding I'm sorry, discover your divinity, find your unique talent, serve humanity with it, and you can generate all the wealth that you want. 
When your creative expressions match the needs of your fellow humans, then wealth will spontaneously flow from the unmanifest into the manifest, from the realm of the spirit to the world of form. You will begin to experience your life as a miraculous expression of divinity, not just occasionally, but all the time. And you will know true joy and the true meaning of success, the ecstasy and exaltation of your own spirit. Applying the law of Dharma or purpose in life. I will put the law of Dharma into effect by making a commitment to take the following steps. Today, I will, lovely, I will lovingly nurture the God or Goddess in embryo that lies deep within my soul. I will pay attention to the spirit within me that animates both my mind and my body. I will awaken myself to this deep stillness within my heart. I will carry this consciousness of timeless, eternal being in the midst of time-bound experience. Two, I will make a list of unique talents. Then I will list all the things that I love to do while expressing my unique talents. When I express my unique talents and use them in the service of humanity, I lose track of time and create abundance in my life as well as in the lives of others. And three, I will ask myself daily, how can I serve and how can I help? The answers to these questions will allow me to help and serve my fellow human beings with love. All right, you guys. And that is the last chapter of um, the seven spiritual laws of success. Um, there is a summary and conclusion, which I will also read as well on another video for you all. I'll probably record it right after this one because I got the energy too. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep keep going. Um, but I hope you all truly enjoyed um, this chapter of the book. Um, as I always tell you, uh, please leave your comments. Um, just let me know what you think, you know. Of course, as you know, we all have a purpose in life. We all know that. And once we discover our true purpose, that's like they said, that's where that abundance of wealth is going to come from. When you really discover what you're truly here to do in life, if you're doing what you are truly here to do now, if you're, if you're happy with what you're doing now, even if you weren't getting money for it, or even if you already had money and you just had a choice of what you wanted to do, if you're doing that at this moment, you are living in your purpose. And to you, I say congratulations and I am so happy for you. All right, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end it now and I'll probably come back and record another one. All right. So until the next one, as always, if it ain't excellent, it's irrelevant. Until next time.